Right, so hello again everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at IP Vanish and giving it a full honest review. Reviews on this channel are done in a way that I personally use a VPN, which is mainly for streaming, unlocking geo-locked or region-locked content, and also just for general online privacy. So if you're looking to get a VPN or you've been looking at getting IP Vanish and you want to see how it works and the app's features, then you're in the right place. Right, so that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's crack on. Right, so first of all, what I will say is comment down below if you've ever used IP Vanish or if you do currently use IP Vanish and comment down below your experience with it and just pretty much like your review. This way, people viewing the video can go down to the comments section and see reviews from not just me, but yourselves as well. And if you're interested in VPNs and different VPN reviews, VPN news and also VPN deals, we have set a website up called Top Tier VPN. This is going to contain all reviews, all VPN news, the best deals, and we're also going to make some kind of chart listing the best VPN to the worst VPN. It is a work in progress as it is a new website, but if you don't like listening to my voice, you can definitely head over here and see it in text form. Right, so IP Vanish, it's probably one of the most well-known VPN services in the market at the moment. It's recommended by pretty much every YouTuber and the majority of websites also recommend it. What I would suggest if you are in the market to buy something, always check out more than one review. Some people may use it for one purpose and it may sound like it's good for you, but you may find out from different reviews that there are features in there that just aren't suited for you. Another thing is, is obviously, the more traffic a person directs to a service or a product and buys it, the majority of time they do get a commission. So this can also swindle someone's opinion into giving it a good review, even if it's not something for them. And that's why I always recommend looking at multiple different reviews. One of the downfalls with IP Vanish is back in 2016 or 17, they've always had a zero log policy, but it was found that they were actually keeping logs. Now, this data was used to catch someone that wasn't a very nice person, let's say. But saying you keep zero logs, but actually logging people's data, that's just not cool. But it's since been taken over by new owners, and they do say this is something that will never happen again. It's just always something that's come back to bite them in the ass. If you go over to Top Tier VPN and go to the login policy section, you will find out a bit more information about it. So I'm going to be doing all reviews on an NVIDIA Shield, which is an Android TV device. Like I said, I want to do it from a streamer's perspective, although doing it on a desktop PC, that would give different results. The majority of the time, a VPN is used for streaming. Some people may ask why I'm doing it on the Nvidia Shield and not the Fire Stick 4K, and it's purely down to processing power. The specs of the Nvidia Shield is much better, and it will give me better test results all round. So if we jump over to the Nvidia Shield, we can see we've got IP Vanish there, it is available in the Google Store as well, and the app is supported for multiple platforms. As you can see on the IP Vanish website, supported on Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Amazon devices, shit ton of platforms. The app is very basic, very easy to use. You can see we're on the Quick Connect section, you can choose a country, and then choose a city, so the city that's nearest you is what's most recommended. You do get various different cities for each country, obviously, and then you can actually pick a server if you like. I usually leave it to best available. Available, but as you can see you get a choice from each city now we see a number on the right hand side where it says they're 23 milliseconds the lower the number the better because lower the load but like I said I just usually leave that to best available and then all you've got to do is click on connect and you're good to go in the top right hand corner we do get a settings icon and as you can see we do get a few options now we don't get as many options as what we get on the PC the app on PC you get a lot more different features on there one of them being the kill switch feature, which will totally disconnect all the internet on that device if the VPN ever disconnects. Another one being the amount of protocols available on the desktop app as opposed to the Android app. We do get a lot more choice. Like I said, I'm doing it on an Android TV device, so this is what you get in the Android app. You get the Start IP Vanish feature, so it'll Start IP Vanish on boot. Start up connection action, so you can choose one of those. Auto Reconnect, which I'd recommend that you have turned on. Split Tunneling, which is a great feature. Any app that you don't want to use the VPN connection inside of, such as BBC iPlayer for me, 
you tick that and then the VPN won't be used inside the application. We've also got Scramble which says Scramble adds obfuscation to OpenVPN allowing it to bypass network traffic sensors which aim to detect usage of a VPN and block it. Now as we know some websites and some apps they do detect when you're using a VPN and they will block you from accessing it. So the Scramble feature is said any websites that have those blocks in place this will bypass it. You also get the protocol section here and we only get two which are both for OpenVPN. It would be nice to see the IKV2 option but we don't and it doesn't have wire guard but OpenVPN it's always worked really well for me personally. But like I said on the PC you will get much more than you get on the Android app including a lot more protocols. You get a port option there, it's only giving me one at the moment, but sometimes it does give numerous. And then you get contact support in terms of service. Back on the home screen, we see in the top left-hand corner, visible location, that will give you your current IP address and then your current location. As soon as we connect to a VPN server, what you're gonna see is now the visible location has changed my IP address and my location is now Manchester in the United Kingdom. So now every time I connect to an app or a website, they're going to see the device has been in Manchester and they will see that IP address and not my own. So now let's take a look at the speed test and how much of our normal internet speeds do we lose. So I'm going to be using Cloudflare for the speed test as I think that gives me the most accurate results. And at the moment, I'm not using a VPN at all. These are my normal internet speeds. So as you can see, we get 235 megabits per second download, 36 upload, and a ping of 13.5. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect back to a VPN, but I am going to have it set to the best available on the city and the server, and I'm going to let it choose what that thinks is the best for me. So then I'm going to test that again. 235 is the number that we're looking at closely, and it is worth noting I am connected via Ethernet at the moment as well changing servers and trying different protocols and things like that will give you different test results so as you can see we get a download of 98 upload of 33 and a ping of 20 i've got to be honest those are lower than what i expected that's more than a 50 percent loss to my normal internet speeds but it is worth noting 90 100 megabits per second download is more than enough to do whatever you want on your device so now let's take a quick look at how it works with streaming services like netflix prime video iplayer itv hub and things like that so i'm in the uk and i want to access the us netflix as obviously in the us they get a lot more content if you're in the us i'm highly jealous <laughs> So at the moment I'm connected to New York, I'm going to open Netflix, and then as you can see at the top, number one in the US today, number two in the US today, and I'm just going to see if that will actually play, and we do start playing as you can see. Now I don't know if Netflix has lifted the VPN restrictions because it never used to work with it, but it is nice to see that IP Vanish does work with Netflix. Now let's try it with Prime Video. So Prime Video does detect that I am using a VPN. Your device is connected to the internet using a VPN or proxy service. Please disable it and try again. You could try different servers and one may work for you, but there is that many to choose from. I think you could be there for days with no joy. I'm gonna try ITV Hub. Obviously this time I need to use it in the UK. So that's connected me to Glasgow and I'm gonna see if we can access ITV Hub. So I'm gonna click on something random, click on that, click on play. I'm guessing, it, yeah, it says there's a problem. So when it comes to unlocking region lock content, IP Vanish isn't the best in the world. It will work with your Tubi TV and your Sony Crackle and Voodoo and apps like that. But when it comes to Peacock TV, ITV Hub, iPlayer, Prime Video and all those kind of apps, IP Vanish doesn't work at all. One thing I would like to see from IP Vanish is a dedicated category for streaming servers. So if I want to stream in the UK, I can click on a certain server that I know is going to work or a list on the IP Vanish website telling me which servers will work for different services. Now, if you take a quick look at the pricing, like I said, if you use the link in the description down below, you do get up to 57% off. So as you can see, for one month, it's $10. For three months, it's $8.99 per month. And for one year, it's $5.20 per month. Now, the monthly is billed monthly. The three-month plan is billed every three months, and the one year is billed annually. So it is worth noting if you do take a year out, although it works out at $5.20 per month, you do have to pay $62.39 up front. 
Now, the $10 per month, I do think that's a bit expensive, but the annual plan, working out at $5.20 per month, I do think that's a fair deal, especially for the amount of servers you get and the nice looking clean app, and it's just easy to use. And it is worth noting it includes SugarSync cloud storage for 250 gigabyte for free. Then last of all, if you want to have a quick look at these, it shows you the different protocols. It's unmetered connections, meaning there's no cap on the amount. A lot of VPN services limit you to five or ten devices. IP Vanish, you can share with your mum, your dad, your family, friends, Barry Down Road. Anybody you want can use your account and use IP Vanish. Then here you see the amount of servers, 40,000 plus shared IPs, 1,500 plus VPN servers in 75 plus locations. That, in my opinion, is way too many. So if I want to find a server that works with a particular streaming service like iPlayer, I'm going to have to look through hundreds of different servers to try and find one that works, and one may not even work. I think a lot of these servers will be duplicated from the same server. It just looks very appealing when you've got that amount of numbers there. So IP Vanish, is it worth it? What do you think? Well, I want you to leave your opinion in the comment section down below to start. Me personally, I've used it for a very long time and I've never really had any problems whatsoever. The only issues I've faced is for unlocking Geolock to region lock content. Problem with IP Vanish being such a big VPN company now is the servers become really popular so they do get blocked very often. But for everything else, it works really well. When it comes to collecting logs, when they weren't meant to be collecting logs, you could take that with a pinch of salt. It's under new owners now. Whether that would happen again, I don't know. It's owned by a company that owns multiple different VPN companies. So whether they're going to start going down like a marketing route, we don't know. IP Vanish has got to come in the top, top five at least. Top five VPNs, IP Vanish has got to be there, but that's in my opinion. Right, I thought these videos were going to be pretty easy to make and pretty short, but gee, I've been recording ages, sweating my tits off, and I, I don't want to do it anymore. But if this review helps at least one person, I'm a happy bunny. Right, so that being said, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, and I'll see you soon. ta -da. The fire stick it seems to cap out at about 50 megabit. The fire stick it seems to just whoa, so much spit man. The fire stick when I'm testing different VPNs and doing speed tests, it seems to be capped at around 50 megabits. <laughs> like I said, I want to do it from a streaming pr Like I said, I want to do it from a streaming pr I can't say that. <laughs> $8.99 per year. No, it's not is it? $8.99 per year is pretty cheap, isn't it? <laughs>